Hi guys, today we are going to be testing out the new eyeshadow palette from Nomad Cosmetics. They were so kind to send this to me. Thank you, Felicia. I really appreciate it. So this is the... Cartagena. Magica. Palette. So we're going to be playing with that today. Um, I'm not going to be saying any of the names in this because honestly, I don't speak this language. And for me to look up all of these pronunciations and on top of it, try to learn how to say something that I won't be able to say anyway, it's going to be a waste of my time. I apologize in advance. So let me show you the palette. So this is what the palette looks like. It is a beautiful, very summery, very warm, but also a little bit of pink in there kind of color story. I think this is really pretty. I definitely have some thoughts already. I know. I'm sorry, Felicia. I'm always going to have something to say because apparently we just have different preferences when it comes to eyeshadows. And this is so funny. The owner, uh, like I said, her name is Felicia. We talk on Instagram all the time and I'm not on her PR list because I, she knows that my preferences and her preferences are so different when it comes to eyeshadows. So she's Told me that whenever she comes out with a palette if there's anything that i want to let her know and she will send it to me so when i first saw the three first shades in this sneak peeked i uh slid into her dms and i was like hey <laughs> I kind of want this new release and I wanted to make sure that I got it early obviously because I wanted to be able to make a video you know as quick as possible so I hadn't seen the whole palette when I knew I was going to get this and she sent it to me but now when I see it I will say that the color story is a little bit limiting for like what I like in an eyeshadow palette so already I'm a little bit like I wish it was a little bit different but like you know what we're gonna work with it and just kind of see what happens so i have already done a look with this i did a look with this yesterday which was my, on my birthday but i just didn't feel like filming a first impression and i didn't feel like talking i just wanted to do my makeup and play some music and just you know relax a little bit before our dinner but i did turn on the camera and i did kind of i mean i did film it but i just didn't talk through what i was doing so i will i guess i will show you the look that i did yesterday before we get into me actually trying out this palette with you guys and like talking through what i'm doing and my thoughts as i'm doing it so yeah let me just go ahead and show you what i did yesterday so i started off by priming my eyes with my nars eyeshadow primer simply just because i hadn't really used it in a while and i figured i would get some more use out of it because i've been laying in the back of my drawer so i went in with shade number eight as my transition shade this one went on really really nicely very smoothly it was very easy to build up it got nice and intense it blended out super well i also took this underneath my eye and just kind of you know smoked it out like i usually do with my eyeshadow looks and then to deepen it up a little bit, I went in with shade number 10, which was very similar to shade number 8. I didn't really feel like there was a ton of difference in the tones in those two colors. And since shade number 10 is the darkest matte in this palette, um, I just, I wasn't really happy with the depth I was getting, which is something that I always talk about in my videos, is that I like to have a lot of depth in my palette. So I did cheat a little bit and I brought in my Moerte palette from Melt because I just felt like I needed something a little bit extra just to create that depth that I like on my hooded eyes so I put that in my outer corner as well as ran it through my crease and my under eye just to just to really darken everything up a little bit so like I said I did cheat I won't do that in today's look but I just wanted to you know do what I wanted to do for my birthday I then went in with some glitter primer because I wanted to, you know, put some shimmers on my lid. So the first one I went in with was shade number 14. And I hadn't swatched this palette before I went in with this shade. So I thought originally that this was a shimmer shade, but it turns out that it's a matte with glitter in it or like a matte satin hybrid with glitter in it. I really did not like the shade. This is not my kind of eyeshadow formula. Felicia, you know this. This is just not for me because if I'm confused, whether or not a shade is a shimmer or a matte like I just I want to know what I'm doing you know I want to know what I'm putting on my eyes and a shade like that just kind of confuses me and it just it doesn't serve the purpose that I wanted to serve if that makes sense but I was able to make it work I I'm not sure if like putting this on top of a glitter primer or spraying it or anything like that is like the way to go with a shade but like I said I hadn't swatched it yet so I didn't really know what to expect going into it so I just kind of treated it as a shimmer and I didn't really feel like it performed that well like it was kind of hard to work with and it was a little bit tricky to just like kind of maneuver around and stuff like that but i do think that the end result turned out to be really nice so after i had done that i went in with shade number seven which is a beautiful duochrome this is so pretty and i basically put this almost on the rest of my lid because i wanted to have a very pinky orangey look and i feel like this really served the purpose that i was looking for 
I also went in with a little bit of shade number nine just because I wanted a little bit extra pop on the lower lash line. Plus I also just wanted to test out another shade and this is so pretty. I really like this. I really like the shimmers that I tried in this palette so far. I think that they are all so stunning and wet looking and just really, really, really nice. And just for that extra pop in my inner corner, I used shade number two, which is, oh, I love this shadow so much. This is so cute. I really, really like that. So that is how I ended up finishing off my look. I obviously did some liner and mascara and stuff like that, but this is the look that I did yesterday. So we're gonna move into doing another look now. So I'm gonna prime, I think I'm gonna prime with a different primer because I wasn't really like super happy with how the shadows were performing on top of that one. So I'm going to use something a little bit more on the wet side because I find the NARS primer to just dry down a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm gonna use my Natasha Denona one because this one just stays tackier for a bit longer. And I find that I just, I just prefer that in my eyeshadow primers, I don't know. I feel like eyeshadow primer is a very personal thing. So I would say that kind of like my main issue with this color story, I don't know. I just feel so bad because Nomad is a brand that I absolutely love, but I always seem to have something to say about their palettes. <laughs> but just know that I really, really love the brand as a whole. So even if I'm saying something because my preferences are different than what is in the palette, doesn't mean that this is a bad palette or like it's a bad brand anyway. Uh, let's see, so my main concern with this is that there really is not a lot of difference in the depth of the mattes in this. So if I cover up this row, basically all of these other shades are almost all of the same depth, except for maybe this yellow up here. Like if you look at this palette in black and white, you will see that this shade right here and this one, those are the darkest shades in the palette. And this one is, like I said, a matte with glitters in it. So I don't really wanna use that as like a deepening shade. It's just not really like my preference. And then you have the red and I just feel like the red is so similar to basically all of these other mattes except for these two. And these are just too light for me to really be able to use for anything. So I don't feel like I can ever really use more than one matte in my crease unless I use the yellow as a transition shade because otherwise there really just isn't enough of a difference in the tones to make it worth going in with two different shades, if that makes sense. At least that's how I see it. So for me, this is a palette for someone who really likes very simple looks and likes to maybe have one shadow in your crease and one shimmer on the lid. Like, I feel like it's great for that. It's also good for doing like more artistic looks like cut creases and stuff like that. But I don't feel like you really need to mess with these too much, if that makes sense. Like there's no such thing as going in with like a transition shade and a deepening shade and a deepening up out of quarter shade. Like there's just not enough options to like build on a look in the way that like the traditional way of building on a look would be. And that's how I usually like to do my makeup. So I do find this to be just a little bit limiting in that sense, but I think I definitely want to use the yellow today because I haven't used that yet. And I know a lot of you guys want me to use it because I did get some requests to do so. So I think that's definitely what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to use that in my inner corner because that's always kind of fun. And then I'm thinking I wanna maybe do like a full cut crease today, because like I said, there really isn't a way for me to use more than like one matte in my crease here, because I just feel like they're just kind of going to end up blending into one anyway. So I'm gonna start by taking this yellow matte here in my inner corner. And some of you ask me if this was a neon, but I would say that it definitely leans a little bit green. I'm not sure if that comes across on camera, but when I look at it, it definitely has a little bit of like a green tint to it. So I'm just going to pack this on in my inner corner and try to see how pigmented I'm able to get this. I have noticed with Nomad's mattes that if I'm not careful, I tend to get a lot of fallout with them because they are so finely milled and they're very, very, very soft. So I need to be quite careful when working with these since I already have my base done. So I wasn't planning on putting this like so much on my lid, but it just kind of happened. <laughs> so I really like how this looks. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful yellow. And I'm not sure I have a yellow in this tone in my collection. Like it really is almost like a greeny yellow. But like I said, I'm not sure if that's going to come across, but it definitely has that kind of like limey tint to it. And it's really unique. So since I played with most of these oranges in yesterday's look, I used this one, this one, what else did I use? I think I just used those two, but I feel like all of these, like this one, this one, and this one, 
they're all just kind of similar. So I kind of want to play more with these more like purpley mauves. So I think I'm going to use this one in my crease and underneath my eye. And then I'm going to cut it and put some of these shimmers on my lid. I think that could be kind of fun. I kind of want to use a little bit of this one maybe along with do i want to use this one i don't know but let's just go ahead and do like the crease first so i can't actually say the name of this it's called omega <laughs> it's probably going to be the only one that i'll be able to pronounce but i'm going to use a very small brush because like i said i do want to do a full cut crease today so this is my morphe e36 it's a very 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 small but still kind of fluffy brush here so i'm just going to place this where it is that i want my crease shade to be and then we'll blend it out and we'll do the cut crease and then we'll put some shimmers on the lid. So that's basically what this look is going to be. I have noticed when I play with Nomad's matte formula that I find the best way for me to use them is to kind of use them more on their own and not do too much blending because this is a very, very, very silky smooth formula. And I find that when I try to go in and kind of build on top of another shade that the shadow almost, I have a hard time like containing the shadow where it wants to be because it wants to keep blending itself out. Like it's almost like you put it on and it just kind of slides out a little bit. It's almost like it wants to help you blend and sometimes I don't want my looks to be super blended. So if you are someone who maybe struggles to blend out matte shadows, I think that this formula would be amazing for you. And sometimes I find that this matte formula is just a little bit too soft for my liking. I tend to prefer more kind of drier mattes. They don't, they don't necessarily need to be like super dry, but that's just like a preference thing, like I said before. Just blending these a little bit in together here. And I am pulling this quite high up because like I said, I am going to do a full cut crease. So I wanna make sure that when my eye is open that I can still see shadow as well as I can see my full cut crease. So I just need to place everything a lot higher when I do a look like this. I always struggle like on the outer edges here when I'm doing cut creases to really get them to look even on both sides because I have less room in between my eye and my brow on this side than I do on this side. So sometimes it ends up looking a little bit uneven, but I think as soon as I go in and cut it, I'll be able to kind of even them out the way that I want them to be. So for my cut crease, I'm going to use my P. Louise base. So speaking of P. Louise, I don't know if a lot of you guys are following me on Instagram, but I did order the new Worldy palette and it came to me last week and it came completely shattered. So I had to email support and have them send me a new one, but I already have it and I'm so excited. I cannot wait to make some videos with that one because that color story is just so inspiring to me and it has so many blues and greens, which you guys know are my favorites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, P. Louise base and I'm going to uh, start on the outer corner here and map out where it is that I want my cut crease line to be. So basically I just have to make sure that when I do cut my crease here that there's going to be a little bit of a gap in between where my hood is and where I'm cutting it so that I get a little bit of space still showing like on the outer corner here when I do have my eyes open. And I probably could have just used my concealer to do this with, to be honest, but they're almost the same color. So I'm just patting out here to see if it's even, and then I'm going to do this side and then I'll go in and cut the rest of my lid after. So my camera shut off as I was applying a little bit more color to this side because I just felt like I needed to even it out. So I'm next going to go in and basically just cut the rest of my crease here. Just gonna start by drawing a line on my lash line and then I'm gonna look up and then I'm gonna cut it basically higher than where this transfers but I just like doing this to give me a bit of a guideline to start off with. So basically my only goal is to make sure that when I look straight ahead I can see my whole cut. So I want to say that these are quite even maybe not perfect Maybe I need to just finesse it a little bit more right here, but I think what I'm going to do is just tap this out a little bit here and try to remove a little bit of the excess. Now I do have a lot of stuff on my lids, which I know a lot of people like to use like micellar water after they cut their creases to kind of remove some of the excess product, but I am too lazy to do that. So I'm going to go in with some shimmers. I'm probably going to, do I even want to put down some glitter primer? I feel like it's just going to be a lot of a, uh, stuff on my lid here so maybe i'll just use them without it so i think the colors that i want to use is going to be 
this one down here, which is a beautiful, uh, how would I explain this? It's not a pink and it's not a purple. It's almost like something right in between. So I'm going to take a little bit of this on an angle brush and I'm going to spray it because I want to be kind of precise in the outer portion of my lid here. And I'm just going to kind of draw a line here so that I connect this with the cut crease. And this is just going to look like a wing when I'm looking ahead. At least that's what I'm hoping for. And then once I'm done with just getting like the outline done, I'm just going to switch to a bigger brush so I am able to put on more. And I'm just going to put this in the probably outer half or so of my lid. I'm going to create a bit of a diagonal shape here so that when I go in with the front color, it's going to kind of lay in a diagonal after. And then for the inner portion, I'm going to grab the fourth shade in the palette here. This one I am going to go ahead and spray and I'm just going to put that on the rest of my lid. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful gold. Oh, I love that. Oh, that is so nice and wet looking. I'm actually a sucker for like gold and silver shimmers. They are some of my favorites, especially around like the holiday season. I love using golds and silvers. I will say I find these shimmers to come across a lot softer um, color-wise on the eyes than they look in the pan. Like some will look very, very vibrant, but then when you go in to put them on the eyes, they're a lot lighter than they kind of appear in the pan, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think I would rather a shimmer be lighter than expected and darker than expected. Uh, whereas with mattes, I'm the complete opposite because I do like having light shimmers on my lid. So I'm going to go back over with that pinky purpley shade and I am going to spray it this time. We're just going to see if this gets a lot more intense. I'm just going to layer that over where I already put it down. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference. So this is really cute. I like this a lot. Um, I was originally going to put that same shade that I have in my crease underneath my eye, but now I'm thinking maybe I want to use one of the oranges. Mm, I don't really know though. I'm also tempted to just take a little bit of this orange just to kind of merge these two. And then maybe if I go in with a orange on my lower lash line, that will tie it together. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a little bit of this shade number nine here. And I'm just going to put a little bit right in between that kind of pinkly, pur pinkly, pinky purple shade and the gold. Just to bring in a little bit of this color. All right, so now that I was able to tie in that orange, I think for underneath my eye, I'm going to use, let's see, do I want to use this one or this one? I'm thinking probably they're both really pretty. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I will use this one because I don't think I've used this one yet. And this is shade number five. So I'm going to try to be kind of careful and just pat it on because I found yesterday when I used some of these oranges underneath my eye, like I said, I got a lot of fallout with them. So I'm just going to really press this on before I go in and do any kind of blending. So I kind of wish that you could see a little bit better that it actually is a full cut crease here. So I'm thinking maybe I will outline just like the edges of the wing with like some kind of a liner just for fun. So I'm going to think about what I want to do. I'm going to finish off my eyes because I feel like this video is already pretty long and I'll come back and I will show you what I did and I will kind of sum up my thoughts on this palette. So this is the completed look. I did say I was going to do a bit of a liner in my crease here and I used one of the JD Glow Neon Liners. I actually really like these for like this exact purpose. I find that if I'm going to be even more detailed and precise, especially if I'm going like in the inner portion of my, my lid, these are a little bit hard to work with, but like just on the outer portion here, these are great. This is in the shade Neon Pink, which is a very fitting name, but I think this looks really, really cool. And I feel like it just kind of tied everything together. I don't know. I really like how this look turned out, but also when looking at it now compared to when I was first applying the shadows, I feel like everything just looks kind of muted, like especially the mattes. The mattes almost just kind of disappeared. I don't know if it's just me, but when I look at the pan here and I look at this shadow and I look at the shadow on my eye, like I can barely even see that I have anything in my crease anymore. So I feel like this palette is very much for someone who wants very 
very soft but still colorful looks and that's how I feel with with Nomad in general like it's very wearable color if that is what you are looking for now personally for me it's just a little bit too just it's just it's just not enough you know like i just want more like i just felicia can you please put a dark matte in your next palette i don't care what color it is it can be brown i just want some depth like that would just i feel like it would just make it a lot more of a rounded palette in general and also when looking at the outside of this it's such a beautiful packaging and there are so many gorgeous colors on the outside here that could have kind of been pulled into the color story like maybe something like you know like a dark purple could be really nice like a very dark green could be really cool there's even like some blue accents in here like the dots on this uh i don't know what that is but that animal like imagine having like a dark very dark blue in this like just like a pop of something else like i feel like it's just missing a little something to make it special and make it different right now it's just like I don't know, it's like a yellow and orange and pink color story that we've kind of seen before, but the shimmers in this palette are stunning. They are so, so, so pretty. I love how wet looking they are and how metallic they are. Again, they are a little bit on the softer side. They're something that's very easy to wear if that is what you are into. And again, with the mattes, they are a very silky formula. So if that is something that you like, if you like something that kind of blends itself and something that you don't really need to work very hard on, I think that you would really like these, especially if you're into doing super super easy and simple and fast looks. This is a great palette. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I feel like the color story for myself personally is a little bit too limiting and I don't really do a lot of like monochromatic softer looks like this. So this isn't a palette that I'm probably going to be reaching for a lot like on its own. And I also struggle a little bit with uh, using Nomad's matte formula along with other matte formulas. Like it's, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because these are so, so, so creamy that whenever I go to like layer another formula over the top of them, it just won't stick to it. Like it's almost like it just kind of slides off. <laughs> like if that makes sense, like these are very, very kind of slick formulas. But just before we finish off, let me go ahead and tell you what I used to finish off the look. So I obviously used this liner in my waterline. I used a pastel from ColourPop. This one is in the shade Extra Frosting. I really wish I was able to buy the whole set of these, but it never seems to be available and I got one of them at least. So I'm happy about that. Uh, for my lips, I have one of the Alter Ego lipsticks on. These are really, really, really nice. So if you haven't tried these and you plan on making an order whenever they come out with something next, or if you're you know, planning on making an order, maybe try one of these. This is in the shade Crush. Such a beautiful toned down kind of pink shade. I don't know, I really like it. And then for my highlighter, I used the Elva 2 highlighting palette from Udensai and I used the champagne shade here. And I think that's it. I think that's how I finish off my look. So that's gonna be it for my thoughts on this palette. It's also going to be my review on this palette. Let me know if you picked up this palette and how you feel about it, because I would love to hear other people's thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you would like to see some other reviews, here is my review playlist. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one.